So we've done one, we've done two, and then we do three, four, and six. Uh, can you see without your glasses? Would you be able to see my finger? <laughs> okay, so take your glasses. Please. Usually I just want you guys to see her eyes and the lights are shining, so usually we'll keep the glasses of the patient on. Alright? Okay. And the first thing we want to do is we want to look at the eye movements. Three, four, and six, hey? So you also put your hand just slightly on the forehead so if the patient does not move their heads if they follow your finger. Okay? Alright, so please look at my finger. And it's this distance, the, or the length of your arm. The length of your arm. Not too close. And you get conversion and funny movements of the eyes that you can't interpret. So you want to look at the right distance. And then you say what you see. The patient doesn't have ptosis and the pupils, and uh, uh, the eyes are conjugate. So both eyes are looking straight forward. Right, let me say, please follow my finger, and do it that way, and you come back, this way, back to the middle. Then you've done lateral rectus and medial rectus. So that is three and six. Mm -hmm. okay. Then we look up, Upward gaze, we check for upbeat and stagmas. And then when we look down, we just take the eyebrows and you lift it a little bit so you can see the eyeballs. Okay? Down. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go back to the nose. For inferiority. So now what you guys do is you go there, and then you go up, and down, and then this side also up, and down. And then you don't know what you're doing. So just do the cross. I think in Geeky Medics I've got the eight shape, so then do it on Geeky Medics. If you want to do the eight shape, you must just explain which muscles are looking that way. Okay. <laughs> so don't do it. So first up, start right in the middle. Say what you see. If you start there, the eyes are not in the middle. If you start here, the eyes are not in the middle. Start with the eyes look straight forward. Okay? And then you do the horizontal gaze, not like so. <laughs> and so, don't, don't do that, okay? Look peacefully to the side, and do the other side, and check if there's nystagmus or broken pursuit movements. You come back to the middle, look up, check for upbeat nystagmus, check for downbeat nystagmus, and come back to the point of the nose, for superior evolution. Okay, thank you very much. Now, if we come back to the middle of the eye like so, which eye, eye, eye muscles are we testing? Medial rectus. So, when you're down there, you come back from that point for superior evolution. So, what does the lateral rectus do? Makes you look outward. Medial rectus? Superior oblique, uh, superior rectus, makes you look up and a little bit outward. Inferior rectus, down and a little bit outward. And the obliques, they may make you look in. Okay. So because it's on a pulley, superior oblique makes you look down and in, and inferior oblique makes you look up and in. Right. So, what is the most common reason for it? The most common pain of the abnormality that we see is a 6 cranial nerve palsy. And what's the cause for a 6 cranial nerve palsy? What's the most common reason for a 6 cranial nerve palsy? Thank you, guess. <laughs> okay. So the 6 cranial nerve, the most common reason for a 6 cranial nerve is raised in the cranial pressure. Okay, if you see a patient with a 6 cranial nerve, check for papilledema, listen for headache. Usually they come to you and say, I've got a headache. Or I'm seeing double. If this cranial nerve 6 is not working, the more to that side they look, the more the double vision will be. If they look to that side, the double vision will go away. Because the eyes are aligned. <coughs> if you start looking that way, you'll get double vision. Okay, 6 cranial nerve. If somebody's got very prominent eyes, the white of the eye on the lateral side doesn't always go away. 
Great, but the patient mustn't have double vision when they look that way. Okay, so that's where I see the cranial pressure. Third cranial nerve, how does that look? Down and out and down and out. What is the down for? Why do we say two down and outs? It's descriptive. So the first down is the tosis, and out is the pupil. Mm -hmm. And the second down and out is the eyeball is turned down and out. Okay? That is the third frame So we get a surgical three and a medical three, and we've done that. Surgical three, the pupil is wide. Medical three, the pupil is spare. <coughs> Good. And it's pulled down and out because lateral rectus and severe bleed is still working. Fourth cranial nerve gives you vertical double vision. So the patient turns their head to the side, otherwise they have double vision. But it's very rare, and I'm not going to explain it. It's very unimportant for the cranial nerve. Uh, but the line, this is the fourth ventricle, and the seventh is not outside there. Our weakness sadness localizes here in the floor of the fourth ventricle. You remember if you stand with your nose in the back of your head, if you stand on your hands and knees, this is the roof of the fourth ventricle, and this is the floor of the fourth ventricle. You see the triangle in front of the house? There's a roof there. Right, the roof of the fourth ventricle and then the floor. So the back, the floor of the fourth ventricle is basically the back of the arms and the medulla gives you up equal stand. And here, so that's the up one, it's higher. And the lower one here is in the cranial cervical junction from the neck, and the connection between the head and the neck. Cranial cervical junction gives you down the status. So if somebody's got an abnormal chiaro malformation and the tonsils of the cerebellum are they may have been to the Borola Magnum there, but they have done with the status. It's also a localizer. Okay. Right, you have some.